Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joseph Cronin. I'm the director of the Leo Beck Institute London. This evening, we're delighted to be hosting a talk in collaboration with the Goethe Institute London, I think maybe the first, but hopefully the first of many. And our speaker tonight is none other than the esteemed German Jewish writer and activist Esther Discherweit. Um, Esther Discherweit is what you might call in German a Persönlichkeit, um, a public figure. Uh, a list of achievements in a career spanning four decades um, is legion and varied, and I will restrict myself to uh, mentioning just a few highlights. Um, Esther was born and grew up in Germany in the aftermath of the Holocaust. Uh, um, her mother was a survivor. We'll hear more about that this evening. Um, she studied in Frankfurt and Lein, uh, and initially trained to be a teacher. However, due to her participation in the political unrest of 1968, uh, she was prevented from teaching in public schools. And she then worked as a typesetter in print shops whilst nurturing a literary talent. It was during the 1980s that she became a full-time writer and has since published across a range of genres, novels, collections of poems, essays. Uh, she's also written for theatre and for radio. Um, notable works include the novel Yomi's Tish, or Naomi's Table, uh, published in 1988, uh, Verin, published in 1992, um, The Morning of the Paperboy, a collection of short stories published in uh, 2007, and much else besides. Esther has been a fellow at the Moses Mendelssohn Center for European and Jewish Studies and writer in residence at Oberlin College, a conservatory in, I think, Ohio. Uh, in 2009, she was awarded Austria's prestigious Eric Fried Prize for her outstanding contributions to literature. Esther's poems, meanwhile, have appeared in publications around the world, uh, including in the Swiss newspaper book Neue Zürcher Zeitung, the magazines Odra in Poland, El Tabali in Argentina, and Prometeo in Colombia. Um, so without further ado, please join me in welcoming Esther Disharides. This evening is going to explore a subject of uh, very personal resonance, who was Schritz Kitta. I mean, don't bother before that, it's good to say a few words. Yeah, good evening, everybody. The problem is we have a second speaker, and the first we had said it all. I know what's that for me, Esther. Uh, maybe just to, to, to welcome you again from our side, as you said. But my name is Van Bauman, and I am the program director of the Goethe Institute here in London. And we had the privilege of having already um, a week ago at our uh, premise. So if you missed that, no chance. But tonight uh, we have you and had another privilege that um, I think a year ago um, we had a tour together through the exhibition that we will yeah. uh, speak about today. Um, by that time, it was in the Berlin Museum of um, Transport. A huge museum where you have all these cool classes. I'm sure there's something similar in London. And your uh, and there was your your exhibition. And we had to walk a little while because it was not, let's say, on the front legs that being human. And that's another story that you might mention today. And if you came here to hear a reading session, I think I can tell you that um, it will probably not be a reading session, but more something like um, something like that. Mm -hmm. and all, just the fun, or something like that. Um, and you're not doing this alone. Uh, I have which also to say hello, hello uh, to you. Uh, John Ball, some uh, PhD student from Cambridge, from Jesus College, Cambridge, is that right? Yeah. Um, and um, it happens by chance that the topic of your PhD piece and is has to be right. And so here's as here to me. Thank you all. Uh, take me. Thank you very much, um, Leo Beck Institute for uh, this cooperation and Senate House, uh, our first time here. So enjoy the evening. Thanks. Thank you.
that's the card that one. Yeah, it's so and now and now to everybody. Thank you for the invitation. By the way, you're back into two. Well, in in one or the other way that your Bath Institute became involved in my project, which you might not know in Langford, but um, I happened to have um, a former student of mine when I was teaching at the university for a client class in Vienna. She did an internship at the New York Bath Institute in New York and kept contact. And then I suddenly thought about running on their books that have killed her. And all of a sudden, she she reached out to me and said, Listen, I found some footage here. Did you know that your grandparents, uh, that's not on your store, were a little bit. So this enriched me, surely, very much. Well, getting to normal stories I hadn't known before. Wife, that's kiddle, and that's kidding. In 2019, I think you uh, realized that we just had the celebration for the 85th anniversary of the King of Arms Awards. And in 2019, uh, a group of the King of Arms Awards came to us and the descendants uh, had the wish to travel to Europe and to see the places, maybe in the last sign, where they they met that the owls, their parents, mainly seeing them last time. And uh, at the same time, I have been uh, chair of contemporary poetics at NYU and was living together with a person named Billy Sahakar. We just had the pleasure to have on panel with, it, with me at the Goethe Institute. And it turned out that she's president of the KMEA in her Art Association. It's really together the kingdom worldwide and with standards and yeah, reaching out. Um, and, and I figured out that Melissa was trying to get in contact with German institutions or German speaking institutions, or as far as I saw it in Austria and in, in, in Germany, and did not really succeed. She doesn't speak German. And um, out of very principal reasons, um, she saw, she thought, and I thought it it should be. Um, it should be something the German National Railway or Japan should do, should pay for the transportation between uh, Vienna, um, uh, Vienna or Berlin, Berlin, and Sudan, and so on. It wasn't that much an amount of money, but other principles we thought this should be done. So they're not in cool. It was really uh, exhausting thing. Uh, who is responsible? Could do a decision, and uh, why is it such a big fuss? And in the end, it's a clean up the the uh, the group Melissa Hacker just arrived. So, hello, <laughs> uh, the, the group uh, went on the track for uh, German trade union for public services. Um, hosted the group in Madrid. And um, when we said goodbye, I somehow was left with the story. I asked the door and she looked bad. George Bond already is the position, um, yeah, for a story. And um, then I sat down with her and say, Oh, this one now to go along, and I cannot raise another question. And then I uh, asked her, um, do you have a personal archive of your employees? And where could I find it? Because I was searching for this particular, as long as, as I had known his name in a way, but uh, not really, I was not really strangling this. And just, yeah, I just wanted to know, could I look it up? Could I see where he was? And, and uh, I was the, uh, Obsessed by the idea uh, that Mr. Mr. Kindle must not have known that the two people, my mother and my eldest brother, who both were as Jews for security in Berlin and had to go uh, underground to survive with the elite, would not have known this 
although he was very much involved in saving their lives, because in 1944, it's a temple in a city in Zohar, at times Niederlausitz, today it's Sari, which where we see the truck line while they are in in the building, which are already invisible, but took responsibility for food stands, for whatever. Uh, to empty the bucket, out, she could, she could not go anywhere. And said it when it started, well, pretending it would be his niece to school in England. And at the time, she was already set up. You know, she was born in London, but so pretended this would be his niece. And that knew there was light and liberation and knew that it had changed to another place uh, to handling and mission. And I somehow lost Shredder, and so on. He might not have known that the two of them had made it. And I, I was always thinking um, that he should know it. Yeah. Um, and when the wall came down, I then had better access to the fire. Yeah. And uh, again, I saw his name mentioned in documents, applications, when I had turned in for compensation. Found um, the well, from the like my mother died very early, so uh, I was 15, 14 at the time. So I, I could not go back to her last world or whatever. So, and um, then the historian answered the note there is no fine uh, original because we don't have any person of alcohol except money. Mean, at the end of the war, they were about half a million employees. Well, yeah, no, our height is kept. So, but nevertheless, she wanted me to show her where I went with my hat and my legs. And one of these documents, she just saw sliding where was um, a document where she could have had gone to the mayor of the city in Heringen and it had a, a stand on it. And I don't look like this. She, as an historian, immediately looked at the stand and said, Oh, this is passion. You can go there. It's not it's not in Poland. You do not have to speak Polish to to search for him. I said, okay. Um, and, and what do you suggest I should do? And then she said, um, look it up in the photo. I said, yes. Then it is a wonderful advice. Let to the fact that um, I started ringing and found and then they deployed. And I started reading there. And after 14 days, someone picked it up and say, why do you always call here? What what are you up to? And Rupert, they are calling me all the time. And I said, um, I want to talk to Sid Skidder. Of course, you're sitting in my head and the dining table. I did it venture up with it in the past. And this answered for uh, no, um, he, he was not a uh, great part. Then he got away. They said, uh, was he a railroad worker? And then he said, yes. Then I said, okay, there were you. And it turned out it was this um, branch up. And I asked him to sit down and I told him why I was holding Mother Walter, uh, that uh, his grandpa has hidden my mother and my eldest sister. We have a difference in the age of about 15 years. Um, on, um, he, he was like, I'm um, sorry, and I thought I was saying, yeah, yeah, okay. Right. At least he didn't do something. You couldn't relax in something work out. So, and after a while, his daughter, um, Kittle's daughter, rang me saying, What is this about? What is Peter Kittle taking? Who are you? What do you want? And then and I said, I do not want anything. I just want to tell you this fact. And then it turned out, and it's Tina Kittle, his daughter, one of his children, and also the grandson, they had known nothing about it, just nothing. In feminine, Reagan wasn't so. 
So I from this point on, um, the story of the Deutsche Bank involves Falcon Cell again saying, shouldn't we do an exhibition on this? And I said, yeah, we can do it. And of course, now we decided to go to the people of my family, my nephew, my youngest daughter, and me together with um, the Fritz Tino daughter and Fritz Tino. Now, Renfell, we decided to travel to the places where it all had happened, or to, to try to find out uh, could we relay all this. Yeah, could we actually see the places where it And then in, uh, we found a director again, which who accompanied us uh, with its kind of how with it. Well, our people did her videos. And right from the beginning on, I insisted saying, okay, I like to do this exhibition in order to honor this art. I think no one ever knew before who he was, why to seek of him. Uh, but I do not want to take part in this kind of musealization, which always so often happens if you start such a project or, or I, I the boss of, of the person. And, uh, and that's why I insist, and by the way, I'm not in the story. I insist on me talking about what we face now from the standpoint of today, contemporary um, contemporary, I want the whole um, procedure being remaining contemporary and from this point of relaying to the past. So, and this is for me also was very um, important because the question is talking about the ones, where the ones, if the witnesses are gone, yeah, uh, it's, it's reflecting to the question, what do the other generations think? And um, and there is a lot in my view I, you cannot put in the drawers of the exhibition. Yeah, and and I do not have to prove the story because I have to know the story. I mean, it's not my duty to to say it's really true. I'm, I'm not a, on, on criminal court. Yeah, uh, so I, I think I choose to um, to go this way that this is our literature where we can be much more free to articulate our thoughts from today. Uh, it's the base of the exhibit. And from there on, I add documents and I read photographs and I'm going to look what or what is missing, what should be should be told, what can can be told, and what can, cannot be told. And yeah, now I'm here to present you because the exhibition itself is not available for you now, uh, but present for uh, this uh, bunch of the seventeen pieces. We did not do that all. We were not very very curious yet. And um, yeah, so having this a little bit by what was sliding um, in front of your eyes, um, you can follow now the thoughts which came up searching for its killer person at the time. No one of us knew and we never personally get to know. And so now I have to introduce Johnny because he's my really cool leader. And it is that. That's number one. Reading back and forth, study every page, waste paper, 
entries in a diary from a previous year. You probably couldn't get one for the current year. The page you keep wondering about is this page. He noted down and chooses of my mother and my sister. Two all the edges that he needed rest it. It's all one of the ebook about them. They are correct. My mother gave these same addresses in her conversation application from Lord's name and I did not. Why is he do this? Why? Is it his handwriting? It is handwriting. Is he writing this down in the Nazi outstated power? Is he writing it down in the current status after the liberation? My mother thought if nobody knew to make that that's what is on her. Was we get connected with those people and those addresses personally? Did she know them? Was she part of Wu after all? And why because the man who was threatened to denounce them when they are the current in Zohar, Javi, Ebot, V. Tucker, was on screen. Lastly, name a man from Berlin, from one of those refuge letters. How does he know about him? What's this question about the play instead he paint or I wrote? Couldn't my mother have been carrying messages? Or know the play she means something else that she might have finished. Had in word. Let's keep out new at least. 12 of our regular adjusters and we are and yes and this this is what finding our brings the family but then in going through the documents he left behind text number two then let me talk did you talk a very honey spotted person that's how you are. And Stephen doesn't know what we are looking for. She can choose the file of family papers that are the extreme with conversation. Urban story. Papa was dead, put it in his publication. He said then he's used to believe that never get the farm and in, in back. I don't know, so it's Anastina. Maybe that might have been another child, and that child would have wanted to inherit something of it. Wow. Not much to inherit. Not much. Or the star. No. We are all Darrods and Darrods with. She purchased the tin cup, Shamu spans the golden inscription, it's a in Gothic strip from wire porcelain. It's in a written in his now, kept on a shed in our living room. The same cups were also kept in the local high art museum in Shire, and they are everywhere in exhibits with the weathers of the German extended in their face. But you see, whenever we got something, he went to the bar and out. There'd been a guest room there, but Baru and a few liquids. And Brandon's sister, the young girl, was living in Deutsch. Daughter, slasher, and held their father. Then my very words day, and their brother missed it as they must back. No time back from the war. I thought we could look for photos. Maybe could Stephen had gone back with her, then my mother, or just with my sister, and maybe among what they all fix it that there could be a spoil of my sister. Nothing was found. Once again, he basically didn't yeah. fall. Sometimes he liked around with the children. They all tried to touch the tips of their noses with their collars. Artists was putting her thigh of laughing. The teacup was fallen over out of the tablecloth. There was another one pink, May of plus. X not words. Now say lighter reverted. Next summer, Arthur. 
That's me. I was on a trust. Yes, where the book by A. Dot Hotspur is kept. The rhythm, light, cars, all to budget. Questionals publication, but your one. This book title it was in the father's it's not book. And as Gina immediately said, this could have been. And father never read books. Never, under no circumstances, did he ever read. When I created the book, I don't allow it. He sat outside in the street. I took sweet barley flowers on that stock with me. That I did present for a friend and my wallet in a cold. Or you should have a jack. With five dollar. And a jacket died with a locker. And Junior, I told my life took with me. The child called on Ray was asked to come back in. In no time, everyone spent it down. I thought about him spending all about books and notes at that house. There is nobody here I can ask about the blood written book. They taught someone comes by order it. The book will arrive in such a much harder place. Or after one or two days that I can't make it. From the store, it's one here. It's then tight with it. Rick, I see the notice. No, I didn't. It's in transit. The room would be like the counter we I said nothing. Now, I'm sitting in 20 I'm imagining that it's with Tito Medellin in his hand at home after work. Or the other thing was never one to leave any books at all. Which was this book for them. I not one to leave this book. The other ring brought palette and brindled paper with smell of the gothic typeface. The book falls open. Page setter. The F female rhythm. The 28 day cycle. Compasses soul equals life, spirit, feeling, sexuality, the multiplicity of life, but also its interior mutation. The remaking of the person. 14 days of high drive always alternate with the M male rhythm, the 23 day cycle, compasses the male drive for action. The P primitive rhythm, the 18 day cycle, it has nine days of high drive and then nine days of low drive. Between the high and the low, we find a minus curve, the half periodic day. And in contrast, between low and high, zero point, i.e. the beginning of a new period, the stronger minus curve, the periodic day. I'm not sure anybody had page way to spend in the Lord Hall. I jump up pages, page 20. Health and sickness, fertility, conception, love, and marriage. I count the literature from right to left. We from left to right. The green situation in that way that makes that with or without Limited color, get no star. Would we want to know words whether a message was encoded with page turns? We can even and peanut is bought up. And in all circumstances, you already know it. We beat the dog ever when you jump. Text number four. My mother is sitting at the kitchen table. 
On the table legs, the paint has flaked off in places. The white has yellowed. The table had eight legs, so she could stow the dirty dishes inside the embedded wooden frame which concealed an enamel bowl. This inset could be pulled out and pushed back like a drawer. She often sat here drinking a cup of coffee. The paper filters were made by Melita, sometimes together with Valtraud. Valtraud was the best friend from school of my sister Hannah Lorda, my oldest sister, who had left home already and was studying languages somewhere far away. When the two of them talked, sometimes I was supposed to go out and, well, play. Maybe I stayed standing behind the half-closed door, or sat on the floor in the corridor. It must have been on one of these days that I first heard the name Fritz Kittel. Text number five. I visited the State Archive of Berlin. The files of the Berlin-Brandenburg Department of Finance were held there. 1990s, after the fall of the war. Was my research in the course of academic interest? No, it was personal, very personal. I was fulfilling Elena's wish. Like my mother, she was from Berlin. And, like my mother, she had survived as a Jew. Her friend Felisa hadn't. She had asked me to search for the truth about her fate. Day after day I had come back, getting bogged down in those files. A caretaker denounced a Jewish family. A neighbour let it be known that she was interested in the flat whenever they would go away at last. And, yes, the electricity company cut off the supply. So, are you making progress? The archivist asked. I looked at him. He let me make copies. I came back, wanted to leave, never come back again. Halfway out, facing the door, I turned back once again and said, But if you could find these papers... Then my grandparents must have a file here too, and my mother, and her first husband, and my oldest sister, the child of that marriage. I said their names. He looked them up in a big fat book. They're listed here, in the book of the Jews of Berlin. They're dead. I said, no, they're not dead. I can witness that. The archivist said that meant he could delete their names from the book of the murdered Jews of Berlin. I said, yes. He said, when have I even once been able to do this before, in all these last decades? Actually, never. He fetched a pen. Text number six. The one-room tailoring workshop. A woman was employed to work there, a Christian. When my grandparents have to go into hiding, she takes them in with her. Unfortunately, this working woman is sometimes, as they say, not right in the head. Then she shouts obscenities about Hitler up and down the stairwell. That's why they couldn't stay there, wrote my grandfather. I can't remember whether that was the Leo Beck report in New York that Catalina had found for me. That meant that somebody called the Gestapo and drew their attention to the family in Haiti. My grandparents had to get away. I would like to know her name. The woman's name is not recorded anywhere. Text number seven. Sonia's story puzzled me for a long time. At Thanksgiving ten years ago, at my nieces in Chicago, we were sitting round the table and waiting for the turkey to be served when the phone rang. Someone picked up 
and passed the receiver to Hannah Lauder. It was one of those devices, out of fashion now, which always sits on a charging station. It's for you. I heard her irritated phrases, fragments of words. Oh my goodness, that's wonderful, and where are you? And you, what, New York? I don't believe it. But still she said she had to, hun to hang up, the turkey, the family, and hung up. Who was this person in their 80s from New York she was talking to? She was part of the household, says Hannah Laura, and nothing more. There are photos of a girl of about eight playing with the little three-year-old's girl. Sonia was a child who'd been taken into their care by my grandparents Berthold and Rosa. Her parents lived in Zorgal, a good way from Berlin. They traded in textiles and were hard-working business people, both of them. From the end of 1938, the children could no longer attend state schools. The parents gave their children, also including Sonia's brother Heinz, over to foster parents. The brother that way, the sister to my grandparents in Berlin, who looked after her well and made sure she could attend the Jewish primary school nearby. English was her favourite subject. The school was in the synagogue in Reichstrasse, and Sonia could walk there from the grandparents' home until she changed schools later and took the tram. She came home about five after a long school day. Sonia's son lives in New York with his mother. Oliver found him. Find them both. He's forever finding undiscovered members of the family. Where was Sonia when our grandparents went to legal? Jay says he knows. His grandmother, Ida Goldberg, had come to Berlin and taken little Sonia away with her. When I came out of school, she was there. We have to go. Right now. Sonia didn't want to. Asked why. Her mother said she'd tell her once they got to the railway. The schools were closed by the National Socialists in 1942. Sonia says she was sitting on a farm in Zorgal by her mother. She has fond memories of our grandparents. And then that journey, that journey to Zorgal in 1943, where mother and child, Hella and Hannah Laura Zacharias, in December, register under false names as living at Schlossplatz Prey with Ida Goldberg, but can't stay there, so they deregister. Then at Siedlungsweg 2 with the Schallert family, then in Heise, at Lazarett Weg 1 with Fritz Kittel. Did they get to know Fritz Kittel through the Goldbergs? We send us on your photos. A photo of Fritz Kittel when he was younger. Her son Jay says he doesn't want to upset her. Whenever she's asked about those times, she gets sick. I ask her about her favourite teacher in the school in Reichstrasse, her favourite subject, and whether she has a best friend. Her son will pass these questions on to her, in English. He has no John. He will do it, he says, when he thinks it will be all right. You can talk much. Takes not work life. Did it talk much like it's feet and quiet and so it's monthly? Who likes his peace and quiet himself? But this watch, he always said it on him. Did you only wear it on Sunday? The gold pocket watch with the chain. I had to ask more. It was cool weather about surely to be taken to work with them every day with this little railway station out building where it's ill to bury the employees of Deutsche Bahn, then the Heights Bahn, but they're dead. Probably nowadays, no children bring them their lunches from home around midday. That is Tina, and Tina is five or six years old. She left and even sent off on her own with a lunchbox. 
Maar ik ga nog maar wel Ik ga ik het Dat zijn in de kleine offices. Met het scaled for waiting birds. Built into the floor inside. We can avoid the debris and also find a tool for cleaning train backwards. An old shovel rod, as old as the spanner. In the head in its house. And the railway workers tap slash the power screen. It got caught up in a world display. The ice barn be period on railway with liable dispatch for the rotation time. When he arrived here, we are in the soil file. The jewels of the other emerald already grown. Or the part that remains an murder. This job was hard lab and shut knock on board loads conductor. On the papers, it's written that about a shut knock loaded conductor. Then, what was it she was loading in the last weeks of the war? Why was he transferred here to this spot on the Vera I never heard before? The American said, and it's seen his mother, it's seen out there that underground, like all the remaining year. The God of Imperial German gold would be hidden very near, near, near Madcats. Until when? Until when? And what? Until the Nazis could arise again from the dead and dig it up. The Americans found it. Then you'll title. Winter Harder, Mine and Factory. The Armaments Company now can't even start in their own way, Richard. But people were still needed to dispatch friends, check loads and labeling, and release them onto the line of summer. That's where the rich ones parted onwards. Let's get a road in his notebook. I am war. That way the war will end more quickly instead of taking a bike. When we snow down there, factory security people came straight up. Did what I had to. Next number 20. Made it from the mayor of Pierre Dandy in November 9th. 2031. The first time ever the citizens of we see such lives like a bulb. During the November 1938 poll, there were attacks on the last Jewish ceremony in Yevian, the Bashavak family. The Bashavak themselves had already been spreading to walk Frankfurt. Especially since the Norsons had been expelled from the state primary school and had to attend the designated Jules class in Baha. During the poll, Yosef Baha's shop was attacked, the doors, windows, and his play windows and the walls around the courtyard destroyed. Yosef Baha was taken into protective custody. And then by a hustle to the Bogen by the concentration camp. In mid December 1938, after he came back from Bogen was the Samming ran to Frankfurt, where he was at Baha died on 29th March 1914, possibly as a consequence of the concentration camp imprisonment or due to a greater spell. In Gestapo custody. He was buried in the Jewish cemetery in the White Castle. His wife and their two daughters were departed to the gathering lanes and died. Of the Jewish people who were born and the old John resident in Nevingham, the following died during the National Socialist period. You will set in by half. 1880. And then also, those are by half. 
Eighteen ninety-nine. Simon. Eighteen ninety-three. Next, what better than it's important sentence for victims of political, racial, and religious persecution. Certification. The above name is a member of the group of persons who were persecuted by the Nazis in the past years. Please support the owner of this certification for protection and help. This is a paper my mother received. What do the papers look like that people today who have managed to save themselves receive? Are there any use to those who receive them? What use? Hopefully they get such papers. Text number 12. We travel back there again. I've not forgotten the bunker. How could I forget the bunker? It was a sunlit day, and Ernestina had said, What are you after there? There's nothing there. Still. I'd sprained my foot, and my daughter had to help me jump over the little ditch that separated the hill from the road. Little bushes, nettles, and thorny brambles. We'd gone the wrong way. We went back again. This is where it must have been. There was nothing to remember the place, as if it was now disowned, a couple of metres beyond the place game sign. We, we looked through railings, downwards. This must have been the exit once. Buried under soil thrown over. Hard to believe that the locals had been assembled here, probably pressed close together. It was like a dungeon now. Herr Kittel had legalized them, had the two of them declared husband and wife, and my sister Hannah Laura, his daughter. That has to be the reason why they went into the bunker with everyone else. To stay outside would have attracted attention. Everyone wanted to find safety from the ones who were coming. The American troops were already audible. The tracks of the tanks were churning through the soil. She must have got herself and her child up close to the bunker door, pushed forward through the others when she heard them getting closer. So she told it. She managed to open the bunker door. Behind her, the people were whispering, No, no, the enemy's out there, don't go. She took the child, eight-year-old Hannah Lauder, firmly by the hand, and pulled her outside with her. The child was scared of the noise of the approaching tanks. I can't see what direction they came from. Just the neat road now, a fast, well-built road, no signs of broken tarmac. She must have pulled her child more tightly to her, said... No, those aren't our enemies. They're from where Aunt Elsa went. Text number 13. Wintershaar, the people call the bunker. 
where a sign was attached in the name of the successor company, Carl and S, telling those without permission that they must keep out. Seven potash mines in Hesse, slave laborers and concentration camp prisoners. Was how it was, says the Carl and S media spokesman. No mention of the people worked to death underground, who, while they were still alive, were brought up briefly, once a fortnight, into the daylight, like dogs, and then taken back down. They lived below ground. And then? Death marches. Was how it was. How it was. Says the media spokesman. Nothing precise is known. Sadly, sadly. No signboard, no clue, no memorial. An internal study we're not allowed to see. The water, the river Verha, is clean again. That was us, says the media spokesman. The miners' national folk song, the Steigerlied, they all sing that on the way down and on the way up at get-togethers, and their families too. A saint keeps watch down there. She keeps them safe, they say. Sacred mass of mining ships. And then, Glück auf, the Steigerlied refrain. Luck coming up. That's traditional here. Once, Karen used to have that fear, that fear of the women for their men, if something happens underground. Some grow old early. Manfred refused to go down. Not for anything in the world, he says. But the money draws the young men. Now women too. Shift bonuses. Castle, Hamburg, the 26th of October, 2021. Results for the third quarter of 2021. Exceptional raw materials, price environment, favours strong financial result. Winters Haldea, Europe's leading independent natural gas and oil enterprise, has published figures for business operations in the third quarter of 2021. Isn't that a bit, I mean, back then? What back then? Led by a prominent industrialist of the Third Reich. Well, it was the same everywhere. When I met Guy Stern, I knew nothing about the huge importance of this output for the war. He's a professor now, was able to save himself as a 16-year-old, tries to get his parents out, fails. He keeps explaining again and again how he actually might have succeeded. He's in Detroit now. Then he talks about the Ritchie boys. He was part of that troupe. I take the DVD back to Germany. After watching the film, I understood that he had come to Germany as part of the Allied army. They spoke German. They'd operated behind the lines at D-Day. And then afterwards, they carried out in the interrogations. Here, very close to here, he was stationed in Bad Hersfeld. So he was among those my mother and sister walked towards. Straight away, within days, she was with them. She'd learned English, believed in the liberation. Here it is on paper. Profession, translator. I write a mail to Guy Stan. You liberated my mother, Hella, and my sister, Anna Laura. Guy replies, you made my day. Text number 16. Aunt Elsa, who had been removed from her job in the Reichstag offices as un-Aryan under the civil service law early on. Aunt Elsa, who I saw on a motorbike, always on holiday somewhere, with women friends, with an exceptional reference from the director of the Reichstag, she had never stopped trying, after she fled, to secure entry visas for her brother and his family. 
for the United States, for Bolivia. She paid and paid and sent money by circuitous routes, gathered information, earned little for herself in exile as a secretary, knew that her mother, her aunt, wrote letters to the tracing service, would send packets to Torenzienstadt, no answer, no. Wrote to these and to those, begged, threatened, paid, in vain. And when the child was still no more than three years old, when there was still hope yet, it was Elsa who, from somewhere, from Switzerland, from England, sent her something for her birthday, with a dress for the girl and a toy. So that's the way they walked towards the American tents and said, we're Jews, help us. The handwritten note has been kept, written by the commander marching through there. It declares the two to be under the protection of the Liberation Army. They moved to Philipsthal under their real names for the first time and in their own flat. Paradise began, said my sister. And yet, so much, Esther and uh, Johnny, for a fascinating or provoking presentation. Um, we have some time for questions. Um, obviously, those of you in the room, feel free to raise your hands. If you're watching on Zoom, if you could kindly type your question into the chat and we will read it out. There is a microphone that can work its way around the room. Um, Uh, yes. Thank you so much. Um, I was going through the Zoom. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for the, for the beautiful reading as well. I was really interested at the beginning when you talked about resisting. I can't remember if you said the musealization or the museumization of the subject. And I, I was really curious to hear about the exhibition that you worked on at the Transport Museum in Berlin and how you were thinking about this in, in relationship to curation. Uh, could you repeat the last second? Were you working as a curator on the exhibition? Yeah, so was as you were working with different curatorial strategies, were you thinking about this very problem or this tension about the way in which the museum objectifies history or historical subjects? Uh, yeah. Uh, we Anyways, uh, you heard us leaving the tax on the Jewish people in Ireland, for example. And uh, I, I mean, well, but it's you, you could think differently to this. Why we included this in the exhibition? Why mentioning this? It's about the skittle and two involved. Or help. And I said, no, Ray, go to know to this heaven, this place. And of course, we need to know what at the time when they wrought, what, what was already was, was happening here. So we cannot exclude it. I will not never exclude this. Now, you may think it doesn't belong to the story, I think it belongs. So, I it just that, that this becomes part and sorts of the videos in town that when the memory uh, safely it's done and then if we went there then or um other um other questions like if if I talk about the liberation, yeah. Um we yeah, have the way a way to think like I don't know, there the were tanks coming in, like described 
soldiers on top. And maybe, maybe because of the military. Maybe. I said, no, I'm not going for these kind of images we saw for, for ages. And I insisted to fill a whole dorm with um, Hershey chocolate in the brown one, the very dark brown one. Because this was the chocolate that Sonjan had with me. So for me, this was totally important. And the whole door filled with this chocolate and people who are putting it out or welcome to take it or not. What's that? So we have refilled it a bit with the door. So it's also a little bit active. Um, another question you saw this out there on the screen who is um, over painting the, the saucy fat. And um, this is a very peaceful image. Yeah. Peaceful, but at the same time, it's also mentioned it's an opera weapon. So it's even in regards to a group who, uh, or whose part in the liberation often was neglected. A lot on so looking like this. Um, so, in, in the with, with the literary literature text, I I was able to uh, express um, what is what is has already taken place in between and after this waves of preventing. And, and interpretation and and uh, public discoverance and in a way also capturing the subject and the people who were the ones originally by experts. So I can express how I felt, yeah, and uh, what what already um, was was in gone into my mind because of this and not because I just stick close to to the objects of the material and what the people say and Astina insisted all the time does it rain yeah so um it, it with these texts I can um also insist um that my work is not to be done to, to make a broken story complete. So I uh, expose the whole, the not knowing, the, the, the mission he did even. I mean, there were documents by her. I mean, no one be saw, but I, I think I did not really understand. After decades, I'm sure. For example, then one document it isn't here. My mother also, it was a person from the Jewish organization is coming to her because she had, was giving a birth, she couldn't go there. So he was taking notes what she was saying. And there is one sentence she never ever repeated anywhere else. It was the sentence also mentioned again, Fritz Kittel, and then saying, uh, but often, people who who were helping us, uh, well, it, uh, I mean, they were blamed us, they were exploited us. So, and often I did not have only to pay material; I had to pay also in material. So, and for for ages, I overlooked this sentence, yeah, and and then all this. Of a sudden, I saw it again, and I said, "Okay, I just recently read the book by Emmanuel Borilla, My Ways from uh, the Congo to Europe," and he describes his life as this someone who was fighting for democracy in the Congo, and was persecuted and had to flee through the desert. And he's describing what happens when he crosses borders. And he is accompanied by other women who also are of the flight. And he's describing um, how he was full of shame, describing that he saw what the women especially 
that I had raised and been raped through and couldn't help. And I said, okay, this is so currently still important. I will put this document, my mother's document, in the drawer. Yeah. Um, because there is this angle to the situation of women on flight today at the border and border environment. So, and so in a different aspect, I try to, um, to, to, to make this possible to think of today in, in the opening in Kempton, for example, where the exhibition was opened at the Smart Museum, uh, I reached out to or oh, he said something like a city in society about the city and uh, our tendency is very much um, suffering from right wing extremism. And so I, I wanted to just to give those who oppose it the greater states also through the exhibition. And I reached out to them and two uh, women from Afghanistan, I think when we saw the phrase in the text, where it was written, the schools were closed, and no one could go to school anymore. And immediately, I think today, it was Afghanistan, uh, for girls and women. Um, two women from Afghanistan dared to go up and take the microphone and spoke for the first time. And, and they spoke what would happen to them after they reached Germany. And, and how difficult for them it was to, to deal with what bureaucracy and neglecting the real names of the children and uh, whatsoever. So, um, and um, the, it, this event also was integrated in the Jewish country. And the organizers later said, well, they had never thought of this way to talk about the past. And, and what, what happened, and the result was the and um, the woman who was the uh, the the president of the Jewish community in Paris, she was there, and other representatives were also there. So at least these two women now got on with the same thing had to deal with all her, yeah. And um, so I, I reach out to, to different aspect or how do you how do you talk about someone you don't know so i follow the family's narration but there is still yeah then i thought okay well here it was so important what he worked for yeah his work day but we didn't have photos actually where you were seeing work it. Yeah, but what we have is that you can show photos by the journal right away. You saw that this Henry thing yeah, carrying the, the, the stuff. So this was the kind of work he needed to do. So you get an idea what he his daily life was like. And, and he was he was not turning a lot, never and it daily practice. And and also those questions this page number 20 or you know, okay, yeah. I think we are full of the idea that there is a group of resistance, the group, yeah, and ideology, maybe communistic, maybe socialistic, maybe maybe religious wise, maybe Christian, yeah. So the group can do the resistance, the group is strong. It didn't work, there was no group, it wasn't, yeah, and and. Although you can know it, look away from time to time again, seeing, uh, raising the question, what does it mean to type responsibility, the personal responsibility? His colleagues did not do it. They were in master involved in the deportation, um, yeah, persecution in Jews, but money with this, and no one of them was ever accused or brought to try. No one, really no one. So, and at the very, very same time, this man, we do not know anything about him really. 
he he, he was the, the feminist says no he was not religious no he rich not he was not into some ideology he just did it we don't even know whether they liked each other yeah he had a fiance at the time the fiance knew that he took in the two so the fiance did not come with it. so he took the responsibility and Alan is all the time talking about I said and uh, these uh, messages in my view of today totally up to date yeah. and uh, hopefully I then I remember yeah Come this way down, so start with Frank. So I don't mind. No, no, it was not. Yeah, thank you, Esther, for your really um, inspiring talk. Just like all your writing, um, it leaves one with the with the right questions. I think um, I have a question about the the practicality of the exhibition, as I haven't seen it yet. How did you um, bridge visually that you actually had two narratives about? Let's get, if I understood correctly, the one that that was in your mind that you were exploring, and the one that the family had. You touched upon that a little bit now, but how did you translate that into the exhibition space? And um, second question would be, how did you work with the footage? Because you mentioned that um, Gerhard Schick was was filming. Um, did you turn this into um, footage for the exhibition, or did you turn it into a documentary? What what happened with that? Yeah, audiovisual material. Yeah, um, and I. On the direct, also um, the exhibition included ten pieces of short video statements. So three minutes up to five, you could press the button and then decide what do you want to see. You want to see how family members and we are traveling in Jari, looking for a check ex exactly the address where it had happened. So one thing. Uh, second, there is an interview with my nephew, uh, a son, a son of my eldest sister, and he is talking about uh, what he felt when he first saw the files and opened it up, and how how they got to him. Also, uh, an interesting question. Um, then there is an interview only on LST, the daughter, that's Philip's daughter, and. Um, Let's, let's, and the daughter and I were talking about what had she known, what does she not know, and uh, I mean, what, what is her approach forward. And another one of is uh, the splinter is completed from my daughter, so this is the third generation. She visited all by herself all places of refugee she knew of in Berlin and photographed them and made her own work out of it. It's totally out of words. That's only something seeing, seeing today. Yeah, well, how it looks today. You go there, you stay in front of something, you know something in the past was there, but it's not, it's not spoken about. Yeah, you just see it. And uh, and there was very very important. We found footage. Mm -hmm. Then it been an Israeli filmmaker. Who once wanted to do a movie about my sister. And this was in full south and six. And she did uh, a lot of interviews with her, but uh, she never released the, the movie. So it just didn't work out. And Gallet Schick was able to find her, was able to convince her to contribute with these pieces. And astonishingly for all of us, my sister extensively talks about Mr. Kettler. She never did this uh, in front of us. Yeah. But personally, she did it. So this is part now of the exhibition tour. Of course, very, to me, also very um, important because um, it, 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 for me, it's a document proving the um, integrity of Mr. Kettler. I wouldn't have done the whole thing if I wouldn't have had any doubt about him and yeah and the, the way she's talking the way she's mentioning him 
for the clear. This was all very, very uh, peaceful and very careful. And now it's now um, then worried about it. The heat order of this link out to some of his Sundays so she could meet other children. She enjoyed it. You know, so, uh, so, I mean, did, did I miss the question? No, no, but okay, thank you. When uh, the lady behind, uh, yeah, okay. no, I'll invest what you did. Sorry. Okay. Uh, um, as one who who actually uh, has seen your exhibition, I can say that you can also read it. Besides this personal story that you're talking about mainly, about the role of the uh, German railway during um, the Second World War uh, and about um, its role in, in this death machinery of the Holocaust. Um, and you said that um, your co-curator actually was a historian from Deutsche Bahn. And my question is, um, uh, was there <clears throat> any point during your curatorial process where you had the impression um, that uh, Deutsche Bahn wants you to display certain things or not to display certain things in a way. Um, I will avoid the word of whitewashing because the documents you can see are, are, are terrible if they are invoicing, for example, the Ministry for the Transport of 7,000 Jews from, from Frankfurt to, to, to Minsk or whatever. But um, was there, was there, do you have the impression that they, um, in a way, um, I want to control it at the end because they partly financed it, as far as I know. Yeah, well, yeah, yes and no. I mean, they, there was a, a vivid interest uh, to to show they they would not avoid to deal with the past, but how to handle this, how to move forward. It. Uh, for example, that 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 no one was ever accused led me to the suggestion to say, okay, what person, I mean, representing of Don Chalani Fund, why does who is accused? Let's show uh, what was turned into the trial. And uh, it's, it's, it's Soviet. Much of this is, for example, the trial against the perpetrators of the so-called National Socialist Underground Crimes, which recently Side of in 2013, in Munich, uh, it's like myths. And put, this guy was like this. So I said, okay, let's show this. And at the end, he got away with it, um, pretending to be a health sweeper. And then did type E 25 years longer. And this was the only one ever. Uh, Brought up in this position, and this need of course that after 45, maybe the railroad workers could go back to their jobs, and this also needs that corporate identity work. And of course, one would know from the other that he had been running this and this back. So no one broke the silence. One thing: um, we had arguments a lot. For example, this thing with this tool. Why why do I want to include the head and angels? I, I couldn't discuss it. For me it was totally clear I would not the editor would not mention their records. Or there is another draw I totally um, put together the stories of a family of those who did not make. So the whole draw is completed with the East Night. And we had a difference, a lot of difference about this. Why do you do it? Then two of them made it. And the great parents also made it. They yeah, had to make this not the story. Yeah. This the story is at the same time the others did not need it. And, and I'm not going to tell just this how this very heartbreaking story of how once a soul is dead out. They belong. They belong in the story of the tool. And they still belong to my story and to my daughter's story. 
they won't get away. It's just they don't get away. That's it. So we had a huge difference about that and, and how to um, how to dis- describe the story. For example, I was not interested in when was the person born, when did he go to which job, when did he get married, and how many children did he have, and whatever. There's no way I'm interested in it. Um, and I thought this, for me, it's totally boring. <laughs> Even if I was a very good guy. <laughs> so, um, and the, of course, I existed how important these kinds of literature are, um, because I think otherwise you're, um, you, you, you cannot even um, have enough data to judge. Yeah. For example, the question of integrity, it is there, of course. Uh, of course I want to, you know, of course I want to do the Yeah, I, we had a lot of difference about this, which on one hand belonged to the fact that as a historian was uh, used to, to see other, other objects more important. And uh, what I also did not agree to was that there was the deep wish to to end three other things of other things. Why do we do that? Yeah, they were they they all also got a brief and, and there was a great work I involved. I mean what is the the message? There were a lot of that thing all of them. It, I mean it's not true. So this is there were surely ten tensions of uh, Great tension, and and really also the there is this problem in the German railroad company um, in a way. Yeah, of course, can can they lose it? Is um, it's 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 a document saying we come to task with the past. But on the other hand, they now employ more than thirty thousand people, and even if you only say of the um, effect. And efforts within uh, the employment uh, growth, it's, it's fabulous. Yeah, they all had got to read it. They all got to um, the, the education, the people who were in education uh, were brought there, they could go there. And um, in 27, it was just till January, the end of January, the exhibition orders in Milton that at the um, Museum der Deutsche Bahn and at the weekend there were 3,000 people attending. There's a lot. I, I was not too fond of to have it often in only the interior Eisenbahn railway something but on the other hand there were people coming which did not come because of the topic. Yeah. They came because of yeah, uh, this fascination of um, yeah, machine, being machine, oh, that's, yeah, um, and and yeah, it is. Um, I mean, Johnny was also there, the opening, and uh, it functioned like this. You had you got this eighty folder, yeah, and um, the texts were. Um, it related to some object. So if you pull out a drawer, it might say on the side, number 14. Then you go and look where it's number 14, in which drawer, and then you will um, organize your own little book. So like this. And by the way, I'd like to make sure that this translation was done by Tom Chesman. Uh, once, once we have called it, uh, which is sort of an art way. And, um, yeah, and sure, there is. I won't um, have given even more scale or more um, attention to that at wherever it is. Um, yeah, yeah, you have to work it out in such collaboration. <laughs> and it's for an artist. For an artist, it, it's not really funny to work with such a huge institution. 
Yeah, if when they enter, it's very, very willingly. They were just not used uh, to to sing in in the current roles. Uh, and the decisions of decision making and also practical. I mean, now when we would set up the dates where the exhibition would be shown already two years in advance at least. Wow. But they were a huge organization, they had a lot of money. Well, so they would put it as a forty, they would find the place, but it's maybe uh, not the best. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> they they yeah. So but yeah. And I also did not allow the yeah, coming mean, back to your question, that the Deutsche Bahn captured this it's it are in this book. That's Tiller. And that publishes only about my son, only about her, the jobs they they are in their uh, this one was good in They wanted to do it. They wanted to leave out the literature, they wanted to leave out the whole survival skin and her uh, from French killer only uh, his and his his bottle of you know, that now and only that's about it. As well, which speaks for a lot of expansion, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So, just to add another piece, just with that, so I mentioned the opening of the exhibition and Skype, you asked about what the Butcher Bar, what I ended up with that opening. And when the, the, the no. seat, were you, oh, were you not? Oh, uh, let's uh, down. What's the name? Uh, 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 yeah, they missed this stuff. Um, but the, the the CEO of Richard Baum was there and he gave a speech at the opening. And then I remember it was almost a year ago, so I didn't quite remember. But he, I think he mentioned, like, when he was talking about Pitts Kidley, he mentioned Oscar Schindler or something like that in the same kind of the same sentence. It was very much a sort of like, look, we had a the bourgeois and it's been like sort of bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. And they just, for them, it was a bit not. For me, it was only about that. Just following for my radio, I was curious to know, did the Deutsche Bahn have any theories about his motivation? Because we look, well, they have known him all around that his character, the same. All research which I could found, which we couldn't found, is, is presented. Yeah. There's no more. Yeah. And uh, my daughter, Lady, was the one who got all the Brazil shine, as though it was always. Children still out after 45, they men about this and this and And, and no, his fire is, is so anti as I did it to compare with other railroad workers. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah, and what's maybe I'd like to add. Um, also, at the opening of, of the exhibition, there was not this idea that someone from the factory should talk. Yeah, it was. The representatives should talk. Felix Klein, for German parliament, your yeah. railroad worker company, she and that are about that. But later, the next time the exhibition was in Hebingham uh, and in Hamlet, and all of the room back. And then uh it's still sold her spoke herself. Yeah. And uh, the last station in Lubumba eaten by my sister, or younger sister, it's still an older one as I am. She also dared to see the giant font it's her. Yeah. But they did a thing this way. Yeah. It's young Paul is do we know that? I mean prepare the flow of those four other eats. And work for other, and then we go back. I mean, set back. I've been learned, but you know, it's especially ritualized set of pressure. And then the one job, you know, by the way, if you like to get some, two of them are in English. Yeah, so it's Ian Gilbreth. From the artificial person. And um, if 
if someone likes to to get hold of front of the images, you can just get that here. So I I prepared this for an event where we could not even show this because there was no screen. And uh, I thought I'd bring it over to more like half of So I was just seeing are there any questions I will zoom chat from you guys. Okay. Well no, we are just to time. So thank you again. Yes, for her wonderful performance this evening. Thank you for your questions. We have some drinks and refreshments afterwards. If you go down the corridor and turn right through the long hall, it's just at the back. Hope to join you there shortly, but please uh, join me again in back. Thank you for coming back into Toronto. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for coming back.